point in the whole thing is that regardless of what is in the Lisbon Treaty, uh, there is something in it that says from now on it's going to be self-ratifying. So it doesn't matter if, if we agree or disagree with what's in it. Whatever is going to come, we're going to have absolutely no control over. Uh, the second thing I'd like to say is on the guarantees, as Peter Bond has said today, um, they have got guarantees in relation to the Maastricht Treaty on, on workers' rights, etc., which were basically blown out of the water with the Laval case. So the guarantees mean absolutely nothing at all either. To come to the two other things about the Danish guarantees and, our, and the self-amending uh, aspect of the treaty, the, the Lisbon Treaty, Article 48 of the Lisbon Treaty, allows the treaties to be amended in the future by unanimity without coming back to the people. It does talk about um, that it must be in line with the constitutional requirements, etc., etc., of the member states. But when you actually look at what we're agreeing to, what we're agreeing to in Ireland, we'd be the only country that they're arguing, oh, well, it'll come back to a referendum, but it wouldn't. Because by accepting the Lisbon Treaty, we put into our constitution permission for any future government to agree by a unanimous decision to change the treaties. Therefore, if we demanded a referendum, the Crotty judgment is out of the water, it's finished, over and done with. Because we, what we have done by enshrining this new principle into our own constitution means that we're giving permission to future representatives in Europe to decide unanimously that they want to change the treaties and there would be no, if someone went and challenged it in the courts here saying we want a referendum, I doubt if the High Court or the Supreme Court would agree to it because it'd say, look, sorry, you can't have a referendum, you've already given them permission to go ahead and change the treaties when you agreed to the Lisbon Treaty. So it is self-amending despite their claim that it's not. On the Danish guarantees, the Danish guarantees were very different in some ways, even though, as Jens Peter Bond pointed out today, that <laughs> the guarantees were very weak and ineffective for Denmark. But our guarantees are even worse than the Danish ones, because when the Danes voted no to Maastricht in 1992, they, <coughs> they got a, a protocol which was a protocol is legally binding it's not like uh, like declarations the protocol did not come to a later date but the difference between the danish situation and the irish situation is that the danes from day one before maastricht came into force had opted out of three specific areas of the maastricht treaty one was in relation to the euro they said we're not participating in the, in the euro. The second was we're not participating in the defence implications and that's the reason why Denmark is the only country in Europe not part of the European Defence Agency uh, and, and other things. The other aspect they opted out was citizenship requirements. So there were three specific areas of Maastricht that they opted out of. And Ireland has not asked it for any opt-outs in the Lisbon Treaty. So what we're getting is even wor weaker than what Denmark got. And as the Danes pointed out today, we can all as what, or what they got, even though it was slightly better than what we got, was totally ineffective. But for Ireland, there is no opt-outs on anything. So all we're getting is political assurances, which are going to be work put into a future EU uh, treaty whenever it comes about. Or a promise that's the case, but political promises are one thing. Uh, but the, uh, the, the overriding problem is that the declarations themselves will not have the same legal status as the treaty. They don't have to go through the same ratification process in the member states. So when it comes to the European Court of Justice, they are the, the body that decides and interprets the treaty. So while you may have these declarations from all the heads of state saying, oh, well, you know, Irish taxation, whatever, is protected or whatever, and something comes up, like, for example, there are provisions within the treaty clearly that allow for a member state or for a company to go to the European Court of Justice and challenge Ireland's corporation tax, for example. And if the European Court of Justice decides that it's a distortion to competition, which is enshrined in the treaty, it says that, then... The Irish government haven't got a leg to stand on as such because they can say, well, with these declarations, say, sorry, those declarations are only what you and the other heads of state thought the treaty meant, but we are the body who interprets the treaty and legally interprets it. This is what it means. So it, it's, it's basically trickery at the end of the day and trying to give people the impression that somehow they got something that they didn't.